My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I'm here with Shauna Wood. And Shauna, you were here at an event with Warren Norwood tonight. Tell me uh, what your thoughts were about the event. And then I want to ask you about the question that you asked. Uh, I have known Warren for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been part of the, uh, I'm not an attorney, but mm -hmm. I've been part of, on the outskirts of the legal community. I support him as state senator. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think he will do well, especially with the mass mandates that he's been doing and just his his lawsuits he's filing that's mm -hmm. for us, the people. Right. And uh, so I just wanted to support Warren. Okay. So I noticed here he has the Parental Bill of Rights. I think that's a very big deal. Yes. What are your thoughts about that? Very much so. I do not have a child in school any longer, mm -hmm. but my grandson is 10 and, okay. and he goes to a public school in uh, Mansfield and I'm a very big history buff and when he's telling me things that he's learning history wise mm -hmm. I'm like just, that's, that's not, not the right way. that's that's not right son you, yeah. we, let's back up yeah. let's go get some of my books out yeah and so you know he revisionist history it's very much so yeah. and even though he's only in fifth grade yeah um it's shocking yeah. what he's learning yeah. and yeah. the way he's learning. So we're trying, I'm going to talk to Ned and we're going to try to move him to a charter school, oh, hopefully yeah. next year. That was very interesting to hear that they had started that one charter school and it was the largest charter school that opened oh, yes. up. I did not know that. It before. was a big deal. Okay. Uh, yes. So they, they understand what the, the, the importance of parent parental role in education. Yes. yes, they do. So, but you had another question that I thought was very interesting and I was so glad that somebody other than myself <laughs> that I brought it up. So the question had to do with grandparents. Right. Go ahead and ask and tell me what the question was and talk a little bit about your experience. What okay. caused you to ask that question? Well, uh, Warren asked for Q and A right. and I wasn't planning on talking because I just don't. Yeah. And so I said, tell me your stance on grandparents' rights. And he gave his answer and it was a very good answer. Mm -hmm. And then of course you stepped in and helped me speak it better than I did and um, what my problem is um, the issues that's been going on uh, in 2016 my daughter and um, her um, boyfriend broke up and I had a grandson that was um, six years old mm -hmm. and my daughter um, did some things wrong mm -hmm. but um, she has done everything right for four years a lot of money has gone behind it I mean, not her getting great, but just finding an attorney to help us. I went two and a half years without seeing my grandson, even though he lived um, really close to me. And then his other grandmother, where he was at every Saturday, was a mile away. So I would beg. I even asked the amicus lawyer. Can I say her name? Sure, go ahead. I, I would beg Catherine Allen, the amicus lawyer, to please ask the father if I could just see Easton for five minutes at McDonald's. Yeah. I mean, McDonald's for five minutes. I would have paid any amount of money to see him for five minutes. Right. And um, Courtney was doing that every other week at the courthouse, completely sober, completely clean. All yeah. the drug tests was that away. And then last Friday, uh, they... They do. They can do. The other side can do surprise. Um, they can do surprise um, drug test. And mm -hmm. she went to have one, which is the court ordered place called Accutrace. She went there, and they said her toenails was too short, and to come back in a week. They took the visitation away again, and saying that it has to go back to the courthouse the every other week because according to our legal documents that if Courtney ever tested positive to anything, marijuana, whatever, we would go back to the every other week. Right now she's on a stair step program where as the months go on we get more visitation, you know, longer times with them. Right. And last Friday was we were supposed to have Easton, we her, but you know. And um they the the new the new wife said that um sent an email to Courtney through Family Wizard and said, um, nope, you failed your drug test because you didn't take it. And, and, sh and so uh, she got a Family Wizard email and said that she failed it. Yeah. And AccuTrace does not say that. AccuTrace sent a letter to our attorney. So, okay, we're going to win this, but guess what? The, 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 the hearing for it is in a month. So we go a month, which... It's not that long in the scheme of two and a half years. Right. 
But how's that fair? I was a foster child growing up from the age of 13 to 18. I was on the other side begging for help and never got help until I was actually hurt. hurt. Mm -hmm. um, Easton is at my home. He's very happy. He does not want to leave, actually. And so I don't understand why pe grandparents can't even see the, you know, even for an hour a month. So let me just let, let me discuss this just for a moment here. In Texas, grandparents have very few, if any, rights. Only and this, if the child is if their child is dead or in prison. Yeah, it's it's absolutely atrocious. Now it was interesting because back in I think twenty. 17, 18, 19, something like that, with a fentanyl crisis. Uh, Susan Collins and Robert Casey, they're both senators, one out of Maine, one mm -hmm. out of Pennsylvania. They had this whole thing about grandparents of the rescue. In this present crisis, we need our grandparents to come up and step up to the rescue. Yes. So, and they were talking about how can we help grandparents. Unfort and because grandparents are the people that, when the parents are failing, we need to have grandparents. The one organization, the Texas Homeschool Coalition, mm -hmm. they talk a lot about parental rights, but they do not like grandparents. Uh, from what I've seen, I've talked with them directly, they do not like me when I talk about the grandparent issue because sometimes there are abusive grandparents. And everybody says, well, we have some grandparents abuse. Well, you know what? Some parents abuse, some boyfriends abuse, fiancés, everything else takes place. But the question is this, that is a blood relationship yes. between you and your grandson, and that should not be, uh, the state should not be able to tell you, I'm sorry, you know what, you're not going to have any relationship anymore. We're going to terminate or we're going to sever your, your daughter's rights, mm -hmm. whatever that is. You should have independent rights. And this is where the state is wrong about this. So the, the part of the, the situation that happened was there was a, a case in Washington State, it was Troxel versus Granville. And... Um, what happened was they were, uh, there was a man and a woman, they were not married, um, they had a couple of girls. And, you know, they were not married, but the, the man used to bring the children, the grandchildren, over to his parents. And, you know, they had a great time. They knew each other strongly. Well, it turned out that the, the, the father committed suicide. And the grandparents wanted to keep things continuing because they had that, that relationship there. And uh, so what happened is that they were suing for visitation they asked for us that they asked to have you know expanded rights and stuff like that from from the lady and she decided that she just wanted to get on with her life her motivation was not so noble the, the presumption now was as a result of Tro troxel granville that a fit parent will act in the best interest of the mm -hmm. child number one nobody knows what the best interest of the child is number two that is a very large presumption but that's what it came down to ultimately what happened with the court situation it went through these state court then after the supreme court the the court could have ruled on one issue that was very narrowly tailored and they would have been correct but of course the courts when they step in they ex they're more expansive in their ruling and this was a disaster for grandparents uh, some parents use this because they say well a, uh, the fit parent presumptively acts in the best interest of the child and they sh and they should use that against the state but not against keeping a grandparent out of a child's life. Let's, let's be honest, you know, they, there are abusive grandparents, mm -hmm. yes, but there are also abusive kids that use the kids as a pawn to wage war against a parent for one reason or another, especially in divorce mm -hmm. situations. But what has happened as well with these courts is that they use this against grandparents, and now the courts are telling you as a grandmother, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, you can't see your kids. And this is abusive. This is one of the things that we need to change in the state of Texas. Here's another thing that takes place here. In Texas, we have the Texas Family Law Foundation, and now they're all four grandparents, mm -hmm. right? Um, don't believe them. Mm -mm. They, 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 they might say this, no. but what they're really doing is saying, oh, we will fight for you. You're another revenue stream. We know you're going to fight for your grandkids. It may cost you twenty five, fifty, hundred thousand mm dollars -hmm. We'll be here and fight for you. This is a fight you should not have to make. Mm -mm. And, and what happens is that the legal system often makes rulings that benefits lawyers. And, and when you have lawyers who are writing laws in the legislature, they are writing laws for their friends or for themselves when they leave the legislature that they can exploit later on. So I this, totally agree. This is a disaster, Governor Abbott. Given Attorney General's opinion, mm -hmm. I can't remember. It was 2006, maybe. You'll have to look it, it up. It was 2006. 2006. When it, when it came down. Yeah. And we lost all rights. Uh, 
with everything. I was I was that nine year old kid that the father uh, passed away. Yeah. And I and my mom went on about her life, and I was always sheltered until yeah. my dad passed away, and then I didn't see my grandparents that that saw me every day of my life. Yeah. And so I I I come from where my grandparents had a, had a much influence on my life right. and teaching me the right, right from wrong right. as my parents you know it's interesting that you say this when i when i remember there was one time i was a kid right my my mother and my father were both working and stuff like mm -hmm. that my mother was out working and i saw a guy on the street scared me and i mean i just didn't know what to do so i immediately ran out of the house it was a, i mean i was probably pretty good shape at the time <laughs> ran straight to my grandparents house mm -hmm. because in my grandparents house there was safety that was very much i very left much. the wind, i left the doors i just ran because the guy scared me they have some schools that they actually have grandparents come into the school classroom because grandparents provide something that a parent cannot provide. And what's happening right now, and this is abuse, this is child abuse and it's grandchild abuse that is being perpetrated on grandparents and on grandchildren by the state of Texas, by our family law attorneys, by our family court judges, by those people that are there. So I'm really glad that you asked Ward yes. the question. Yes, I, I have asked, I said, what is it about me that's not letting me see my grandson? Right. And and they're saying, no, oh, it's not you. It's just the way it is. Right. What, what do you mean that's the way it is? Right. Uh, my grandson, I have just as much to be in his life right. as the stepmom yeah. or uh, the other grandmother. Right. I mean, I don't want more. You just I just want, want be, equal. Yes, I know. Exactly. And it's it's not, it's not I'm, I'm, I want to you know, to be right there all the time and be in the middle of everything, but I should have um, your, the right to see him your when I want to. child needs you. Exactly. And the state is denying that, and the attorneys and the judges are denying that. Yes, they and are. And that is abusive, and sometimes there is a manipulative person that causes that as well. But I'm going to say something else as well here. I don't know whether you're a Christian or not, I but am. in the Old Testament, um, it says that parent that, that you're supposed to teach your children and your children's children. Yes. So in the Old Testament, God knew the importance of grandparents. When you mm -hmm. look at Job, it mm -hmm. talks about Job had many grandchildren, and, and I think that the... I you love know, that. Uh, Yes. I know, m m many, many grandchildren. He did. And, you know, the, the whole culture of the Middle East is different. Where I used to live in the Middle East. Oh. I was a missionary over there. So I would watch families that would say, here's the mother and the father. One of the mm -hmm. children gets married. And they build another addition on top of the house so that, you know, usually it was the, 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 yes. the, the son would bring the, the wife home. And th there's a lot of things with that. But the family was extended. Exactly, and, and that's that's how I was raised. I right. was raised in Oklahoma. I, I'm a, one of six kids. My grandparents lived down the street. I right. was raised on a cattle ranch. Um, I would ride my horse to my grandparents' house to eat right. fried chicken. Right. So Easton wants me at the ball games. Yeah. Uh, Easton wants to see me. Um, so I just don't understand. I mean, if I was a bad person, yeah. I get that. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm educated. I have a very good job. I have, you know, I attend a church. I'm very active. I, I love also politics and, yeah. you know, enjoying yeah. it. So do you think Warren's going to back you up? Oh, yeah. Side? Okay. So if you're a grandparent and if you live in the eight counties that yeah. Warren represents, vote for vote Warren. Vote for North. Warren. Okay, great. <laughs> and anything else you'd like to say? I, I'd like, I'd like to t talk with you further, but I know our time oh, is yeah. short right now. No. But I'm glad vote that you, for Warren. I'm glad that you also mentioned too that grandparents need to be involved in grandchildren's lives for themselves and for the grandchildren. There was one lady, her name is Dr. Roma Hanks, and uh, she said that in her opinion in the 21st century, the most important role in the family is going to be the role of grandparents. Well, look at Japan. Who, uh, China, I have a good friend of mine that was born and raised in China. She, she worked every day. Her parents took care of her child. Mm -hmm. her, her child was closer to the, the grandparents. grandparents. This is China now. Right. And Japan is the same way. The grandparents live in the Hispanic culture. Grandparents live. Right. You know, we need to realize the importance of grandparents. Yes. But also, as my daughter, she needs to have a very active role in her son's she life actually, as well. Absolutely. I mean, she, she, she that child worships and adores her his her mother. mother. Yes. And um, and it is abusive for the court. It's very abusive, especially last Friday when even Accutrace said, "Yeah, nothing's wrong." Yeah. 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 
Well, Shauna, I, uh, I appreciate talking with mm -hmm. you. Uh, we Thank have another you. guy who's out running, Jeff Younger. He's yes. looking at comprehensive family law reform. Uh -huh. We have two governors. Uh, well, actually, we have three gubernatorial candidates who've talked about family law issues. Yes. Um, we have our current governor who's now starting to give lip service to it. Maybe it's going to be more than that. Who knows? But we need to take this, shake it to this core and its foundation, mm -hmm. because if you destroy the family, you destroy society. And, whether, and the family is mm -hmm. more than just mom and dad, you know, and son and daughter. It involves grandparents. It involves uncles. It involves aunts. Everybody. Everybody. I was taken in at 16 by my aunt and uncle. They were in their 60s and took in a teenager. So they because, came to your rescue. Because they knew that I needed, you know, to be with family. Right. So aunts and uncles are just as important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Shauna, thank you so thank much you, for Jeff. taking this time. And uh, vote for Warren Norris. Vote for Warren. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. One thing that I've learned, and I was in the legislature for four years, um, it was a, an interesting experience. You learn that there's a certain type of person you need to be in the legislature. You need somebody who has a firm grounding in ideology, in conservative values, and principles. Warren has that. He's been in the fight for years. Warren's a great candidate, and I'm confident he's going to win this election and take this district back. When he does take this district back, I know he isn't going to back down and he's going to be one of the best senators we have down in Austin. We're here tonight to take a first step on a journey together. We're here to take action to protect our freedoms and future. We are here to take back Senate District 10. And there's too much at stake for native Texans protecting what blessings we have for new Texans arriving here and escaping big government nightmares, and for all Texans striving to achieve their dreams here. For decades, I have stood for liberty by defending our Constitution in our community, the Army, and the courtrooms. I will continue to do so as your next Senator. I look forward to working with all of you, and I appreciate all of you being here very much. Thank you. Woo!